So welcome everyone to the book launch for Cultural Crowdfunding Platform Capitalism, Labour and Globalisation, edited by Vincent Rousset. Um, so I'll tell you a bit about the structure for today. We're going to start, um, well I'm going to introduce the speakers. We have two speakers and two respondents. Um, they're each going to speak for a bit. And then we're going to go to questions and uh, then we're going to share some food and wine as well. But feel free to grab anything to drink in the meantime if you like. Um, so we have today um, Vincent Rousset and Jacob Matthews, who are going to talk about the book. Then we're going to have uh, responses from uh, Athena uh, Karatsogiani and Alberto Kosu. And we also have Andrew Lockett from Westminster University Press, which is the publisher for the book. And the books are for sale, so you're welcome to take a look later as well. So I'll just say something quick about the book before I introduce the speakers. Um, so this book analyzes the strategies, usages and wider implications of crowdsourcing and crowdfunding platforms in the culture and communication industries that are reshaping economic, organizational and social logics. Platforms are the object of considerable hype with a growing global presence. Relying on individual contributions coordinated by social media to finance cultural production and carry out promotional tasks is a significant shift, especially when supported by morphing public policies supposedly enhancing cultural diversity and accessibility. The aim of this book is to propose a critical analysis of this phenomena by questioning what follows from decisions to outsource modes of creation and funding to consumers. Drawing on research carried out with the COLLAB program backed by the French National Research Agency, the book considers how platforms are used to organize cultural labor and or to control usages, following a logic of suggestion rather than over uh, injunction. Um, also to mention that the event, as you can see, is being filmed you might want to take that into consideration later for the discussion, but if you have any questions about where the film will be um, displayed later, you can ask Ambrose here. Okay, so I'll go into introductions now. Uh, Vincent Rousset, over there, is Associate Professor of Information and Communication Sciences at the University of Paris 8, and a member of the Center for Media, Technology and Internationalization Studies. Author of numerous articles, his work deals with musical and artistic practices with regard to digital technologies and the evolution of their methods of valorization and circulation. He has participated in and directed research programs related to those matters and was the leader of the Collab Research Program from 2015 to 2018, which has given um, has had this book as one of its outcomes, and which was funded by the French National Research Agency. He's author of an I apologize for my bad French, uh, Mythology de la Hypote, co-author of uh, La Culture par le Fou, and co-edited the volume uh, Financement Participatif, the Nouveau Territoire du Capitalisme. Uh, then we have here next to me Jacob Matthews, who is Professor of Information and Communication Sciences at the University of Paris 8. He is the author of Communication d'un star, uh, Jim Morrison, co-author of Le Web Collaboratif, La Culture par le Fou, and platform economics. He has directed several research programs looking into evolutions in the cultural industries and the development of the collaborative web, and was head of Center for Media, Technology, and Internationalization Studies in 2017 uh, to 2018. He's currently an associate member of the Laboratory of Applied Research in Social Sciences uh, at University of Toulouse and the Inter-University Research Center on Communication, Information, and Society at the University of Quebec. His research now primarily focuses on the political economy of the internet and digital intermediation platforms. Well, that's there's an introduction, cool. And um, yeah, just to make um, a comment in case you haven't seen the amendments on the event, uh, Jeremy Vachette was supposed to be one of the respondents, but unfortunately he could not make it today, but we are uh, very lucky to have Athena take over his place. So uh, in case any of you don't know her, Dr. Athena Karatsogiani. Uh, no, I just. Well, she's an associate professor and has published extensively several uh, topics. And uh, Alberto Coso is also a lecturer here in media and communications at uh, University of Leicester. And uh, yeah, he researches digital media, art activism, and has a, a forthcoming book yes, that's as well, right. which I'm sure you can promote later if you like. Uh, okay, so then um, we'll get started. Uh, Vincent's going to start and speak for about 15 minutes on um, the book, and then Jacob will Thank you. Thank you, Bonne, for the, this presentation. Uh, I'd like to welcome Athena for all the stuff she did of the organization and make this happen today. Um, so, and I think the 
Leicester University, uh, Westminster Press for the book. And well, I knew all for, for being there. So um, as far as I'm speaking too much uh, all the time, um, I'm sorry, but I'm going to read my text, so must might be straight on time. So to begin with, um, I will stress that the discourse is underpinning the participative and collaborative aspect of the internet. Along with their implementations, all seem to come back to the idea that pulling together the efforts of individuals can open up a better future. One of greater solidarity and equality. Um, the preferred tool for this is the internet and more broadly digital technologies as a whole through platforms for information exchange and especially for crowdsourcing, for example, collectively producing and analyzing data uh, crowdfunding and providing services like Uber or, or uh, Airbnb. One can see that the principles of innovation, revolution, communities, action and networking are all very much present in digital discourses. But, and it is one of the central questions that drove this book, uh, is that um, does the discursive rhetoric of empowerment and participation and the new services provided really bring about individual li uh, liberation? Or are there new forms of alienation serving a neo-capitalism whose power resides precisely in mythification in Roland sense? And in the what I would call the naturalization of everyday actions which may be simplified by digital technologies but which are also subject to new forms of control. Based on cultural crowdfunding platforms, as you presented it, uh, this book avoids mainly functional approaches, um, taking instead a critical socio-economic um, basis. Our hypothesis is that the development of these platforms and these discourses that accompany them are indicative of a capitalist ideology marked by the logics of ecosystems, of project-based value creation, and of outsourcing of tasks which attempt to conceal the forms of labor and the social and financial apparat no, sorry, apparatuses driving them. All the chapters of the book, as you said, are the results of a research we carried out with a, within the framework of uh, the Collab project financed by the French National Research Agency. And um, quantitative and qualitative data were produced and compiled within this program and it informs every chapter of the book. Uh, as a part of this research program we carried out field work with numerous players connected to these platforms in France, in Europe, especially UK, Benelux, Spain, but also in various countries to work on sort of global, what we call the global south. So, which was, uh, and Jacob will talk a bit more about that, um, <coughs> concerning sub Saharan Africa and Latin America. So, there was two uh, big studies made there. Um, to, to explain the, um, the way this book is written, uh, there was uh, five chapters. So the first chapter is the introduction. And uh, I, I will talk about the, the four uh, following chapters. So in the second chapters, 
we situated crowdfunding platforms in their historical context. I recall that far from being new, these phenomena have their roots in far older practices which they update with the use of digital technologies. Fundraising, equip, tontin in Africa are all examples of the existence of such practices before and without digital technology. I trace that the ideological foundations of the participation and collaborations underlying these platforms, showing that debates about the idea of crowdsourcing and crowdfunding typically operate with a managerial conception of participation. In the third chapter, I approach crowdfunding through the question of the alternative. Uh, an, alter an alternative may be promised by this sort of apparatus, or it may be more directly defined by this platform's work, where the expression alternative finance market is used. In either case, we should question this potential alternative and its disruptive character in terms of the logics of intermediation involved, the partnerships forged by crowdfunding sorry, platforms and the competing economy logics they established. I show how far from being truly opposite <coughs> sorry uh, opposition um, or um, oh, sorry uh, the, these platforms are new intermediaries in this uh, problems to promise the intermediation in term Intermediation. It's more fluid. Anyway, um, <coughs> these platforms are new um, intermediaries in this creative ecosystem which effectively reinforce the tried and tested logics and strategies of the capitalist cultural industry. In the fall chapter, I wrote with my colleague Jacob Matthews, um, we address crowdfunding from the perspective of labour, even though the ideology of digital technology seeks to emphasise the ludic nature of the phenomenon and leaves aside the issues of labour, both inside and on these platforms. This chapter doesn't consider project creators and platform employees separately. Its original contribution is to question their activity con conjointly of both participating in the same logic of what we call polymorphic entrepreneurship. The fifth chapter, and the last one, was written by Jacob, my colleague Jacob Matthews, Stefan Constantini and Alex Beniston, and it questioned the role played by crowdfunding platforms in processes of globalization. The preceding chapters offer a sort of overview and critical analysis of the platforms and their models in Western countries, but what about the Global South? One of the main ideas was to uh, question if we could locate original and dull genius models of crowdfunding in these regions or do we simply en um, encounter exogenous models that reinforce Western capitalist logics? And we will have a few words on it. To finish my this quite a uh, light presentation. Um, <clears throat> I will state a few thema thematics that this book opens on. First, um, looking past the claims of politicians, administrators who see crowdfunding as a 
complementary tool rather than an exclusive one. We believe these platforms are the forerunners of logics aiming at general, generalized outsourcing with activities, teams and communal and public organization funded solely by the citizen who consume them, all in the name of participative democracy and collabor collabor collaborative economy. Questioning possible free labour, what we call gamification, or more subtle ways of reorganising labour, which is an important subject in France at the moment. Um, I, I guess maybe it's the same in England as well, but as far as you, you may know that France is on a strike for weeks now. Well, you have maybe a few words on that as well. Um, second theme, and more generally, generally, sorry, this type of platforms raise questions about the displacement of social structures in which the project becomes central. Every moment of life is governed by a project. And as academics, we know this uh, situation of being into a project to finance a project. And so from an early age, one has to build a life project. Students, the unemployed, academics, retirees, politicians, almost base their lives and work around the constant renewal of projects. And the third point um, I would talk on, in, uh, and which uh, this book open up, um, is the question that the platforms and their usages must be questioned very often as they are absolutely not unlashed this way by the impact they have on the environment and the global warming so often referred to in terms of creativity, innovation, democratized usage and other such one-click wonders those platforms like all ICTs uh, clearly no longer correspond to sort of angelic expectations uh, formulated in the 90s like reduction of ink and paper consumption and waste, limited transport related pollution thanks to remote working etc etc. Even if they have increased knowledge transfer exchanges and thus productivity. That was my presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you very much for being here, and thank you, Vincent. Um, I, I, I will thank Vincent even more so because, uh, actually, uh, to put it in a nutshell, I shouldn't really be here because I'm 100% uh, uh, discharged from uh, teaching and research work this year, working for my union. And Vincent shouldn't be here either because uh, we voted a strike in our department two days ago. But uh, <laughs> so to, uh, to not upset Athena and of course to be able to deliver this, we're Athena. making a, a little exception to that. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks a lot, for Athena, really for making this happen, and Andrew for you know for being here too. That's great, and um, Alberto, Paola, I'm you know, pleased to meet you and happy that we can do this today. So yeah, I'm going to briefly develop a few points that uh, Vincent made uh, concerning the uh, discourse and the strategies of these platforms, or rather the discourse that these platforms uh, contribute to or, or borrow from on the one hand, and the wider strategies which they are part of on the other hand, uh, strategies of, of capital, uh, to put it plainly. Um, and I'll be focusing um, specifically on the crowdfunding platforms that we uh, encountered, interviewed, uh, observed in, as Vincent said, 
uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and Latin America. Um, although, uh, one thing our study does show is that there is no neat divide in this area between North and South. Uh, rather some subtle differences um, in, a, in a more totalizing schema. Um, but you know, marginal differences in the deployment of digital intermediation platforms can also be seen, for instance, when you compare the situation of the UK to that of France. So I, I don't want to insist too much on a north-south uh, divide in this, in this specific area. One um, recurrent mistake, however, would be to consider, I think, that the north and, and the western um, areas, um, that in, the, in that respect, technology, telecommunications, or the so-called creative industry sectors are ahead of their uh, southern counterparts. Of course, many of the key players uh, are based in the metropolitan centers of the north, and ownership lies principally in the hands of companies and ultimately physical persons who also belong to the north or, or, or own it, if you want to look at it from that viewpoint. But however, the globalization process that we saw some aspects of through this work uh, blurs that north-south dichotomy with the emergence of powerful local uh, economic elites, uh, which are often also transnational players. And we've seen that, uh, incidentally, with the case of Isabel dos Santos in the past few days. But also with southern, wholly deregulated socio-economic areas, um, in some respects showing the way for increased international uberization, if you allow me to use that term. Lighting up the path for a future uh, capitalist market expansion towards a bright future devoid of any cumbersome uh, legislative worker or consumer protection. And in this, re in this respect, the South uh, may appear to be ahead of us. Um, no doubt our Cayman on Thames task force of a government will soon right this wrong. Uh, the key point, however, I want to make today is that crowd crowdfunding is indeed a fabulous little ideological knot. It ties together those various enchanted and wildly optimistic themes that Vincent was referring to, emancipation, development, empowerment, participation, sharing, and it ties all this soppy, self-satisfied spiel with that magical incarnation of real concrete labor, money. And this is where crowdfunding is an interesting case study within the, the wider realm of digital intermediation and, and, and technological hilarity. It links the cold-blooded uh, deranged calculation of international finance, abstract capital's ab absurd quest for ever more, with that, with what nevertheless remains of human desire for emancipation, redistribution, and of course, creation. And crowdfunding therefore performs a, a wholly ideological task, and this was one of the most um, enlightening, uh, although frightful aspects of our work, actually observing how the discourse of educating the African and Latin American masses worked, how this uh, evangelization process is actually carried out. But crowdfunding wouldn't be complete, or indeed would be somewhat pointless, if it were merely a tool for converting artists and other workers and consumers in numerous fields to uh, a neo-capitalist, if you like, entrepreneurial mindset. Because crowdfunding also performs the concrete task of accompanying and intensifying the financialization of the economy. And this is, of course, particularly clear in sub-Saharan Africa, where the various ventures, we ventures that we observed are systematically linked to large banking concerns. And as uh, Lapavitsas wrote over 10 years ago, and I quote now, during the 2000s, Capital has flowed from poor to rich countries on a large scale, an evidently pathological outcome of financial liberalization. The most remarkable holder of reserves, however, is surely sub-Saharan Africa, which held roughly $163.5 billion in 2008, an increase of roughly fivefold during the period. Even impoverished Africa contributed to the net flow of capital from poor to rich countries a process which has hardly been overturned in the recent period, and which crowdfunding is an obvious contributor to. 
and it's linked with the development of so-called uh, fintech solutions for the South. But this, again, is by no means specific to these geographic and socioeconomic areas, and I'd like to finish with an anecdote which epitomizes the contradictory nature of crowdfunding. Vincent referred to the strikes that have now been going on for seven weeks in France, and there's a there's a large solidarity movement with that with that strike with those striking workers. Um, one obviously must put this into context. The strike is to defend what is left of a public retirement system that was set up by uh, the communist, socialist, Gaullist coalition that was ruling France after the Second World War. And to date, almost three million euros have been raised in support of striking workers on one, only one, of the major crowdfunding platforms, three million, where the CGT's Princes Union has set up a strike fund. And what this, the name of this platform is Le Pau Commun. At first glance, all that is very well. And of course, it illustrates the strong popularity of this movement. But the platform that actually is hosting this campaign happens to be owned by the Natixis Investment Bank. And the site takes a 3% commission. So that's almost 100,000 euros taken from the support for striking workers to feed Natixis shareholders. And in a cruel way, this apparent paradox illustrates both the pervasive nature of digital intermediation platforms and also the failures of alternative or oppositional groups facing these broad strategies of capital. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to keep uh, questions for later, if you can. And um, who's going to respond first? Alberto? Okay, so Alberto goes next. Okay, so thank you very much for, for being here, for your presentation, for I've written uh, this book, which I've read uh, during the last week. <coughs> and um, I personally have had some experiences uh, of cultural crowdfunding, especially when I was doing research about artists in Milano. Um, at a certain point, uh, some of them, they also turn to cultural crowdfunding platforms. And uh, I, I think what I experienced there resonates quite, quite a bit with what you've experienced in, in terms especially of people uh, often leveraging their own social capital uh, in order to create something that is, of course, may very often related with artistic projects or cultural projects, which may be right or wrong, I don't know, could not be funded otherwise. Um, plus, one thing I would like to keep in the background with that what I haven't seen, uh, I think, present. I mean, yeah, you speak at, uh, uh, diffusely about the pervasivity of this discourse and overly emphatic discourse about the platforms that are going to change or the revolutionizing the ways in which things are done uh, in terms of culture and arts. But it's also this been this hype and this cool and this appeal uh, that these platforms have had. And it's something that I would like to keep it uh, uh, in the background. This, uh, if you want, it was this beautiful book by Elfie Bone, Candy Crush Capitalism, talking about interfaces, the easiness. I mean, if we compare how it's easy to make your claim for, okay, I want to do this and I want to raise money compared to the difficulty of applying for a grant in a national or local body, um, that has been this attraction, which I think capital is very well equipped to intersect. So this desire of immediacy, of easiness that capitalism uh, often does. Uh, I've got a, some Remarks. I don't know if I would like to be able to explode all of them, or probably we can take them to the discussion later. Uh, one point is that uh, at some point in the beginning of the book, you seem to hint towards that value production is being brought to the outside, so to the people. You seem to suggest that the people who are actually funding, uh, that pledging money for a cause, are the people in charge of value production. So it's a sort of externalization of value production. And I think I'm not convinced by this view in terms of the people, yes, they are active, they are pledging money, they're doing something, something very eligible in terms of action. They're pledging money, yes, they're expressing something which is based on trust, social capital again, uh, very often, very often that we, we know in the background that many people put even their own money from the pocket to make believe that there is an ongoing trend and there is, the thing is moving, right? Uh, convince people, that they, I've met people actually do that. Um, 
And, uh, and so, I, I'm, I'm, if I think, probably it's a crude example, but a, a writer, a friend of mine actually, uh, he pledged money, he, he asked for 50,000 euros to go and do research in the Middle East. He's a very renowned scholar for migration, although an independent scholar. Um, so he could not pledge for institutional funding, for example, and he managed to get that money. So the value, is it the research in itself? I mean, he is justifying that effort, and the value ultimately resides in the book that he made. Uh, so there is a, I don't know, probably a, a, a Marxist uh, a debate about where values production takes place in this, in this context. So uh, my point is that probably in this case, uh, this value is still connected to the production of a cultural or artistic uh, project. So this is a one, one point. And another major point, I think, where uh, probably there is a, not an entire alignment between my, my thoughts and yours, it is the, uh, the locus of ideology. Where is it? Uh, you seem to uh, agree with a vision in which ideology is embedded in the technological artifact and in discourses of the promoters somehow. Um, although, I don't know if you definitely go on and uh, detail the role of different players which are in, included in this environment, um, but I don't think uh, there is a, an acknowledgement of the role of practices and the people and the uses that people do of these technologies. It seems uh, at the first glance as a, an old, powerful, uh, pervasive uh, uh, ideological apparatus in the Althusserian term, probably, uh, that goes on and uh, crushes the wheels and creates new subjects who can, nothing do, can do nothing but start and pledge money. I'm, I'm exaggerating, of course, for the benefit of clarity. Um, and this brings to another issue, which is uh, something that I think it's important to distinguish, especially in these cases, which is what is market and war is capitalism. And if these cultural crowdfunding platforms are market intermediaries or capitalist devices of capture, uh, dispositives, I think, in, in your own uh, terms. Uh, and I think that although uh, it is uh, interesting, uh, and, I, and I see uh, how you tend to stretch a critique which is established in the critique of platform labor, digital labor, gig economy, of actually the riders. I mean, it seems to, to, out, to stretch a little bit the line of argument for which we can criticize the exploitation that takes place in putting to work migrants to ride for uh, Deliveroo or Fedora, or that kind of stuff, from the people who engage in cultural crowdfunding. I think that it, there is a, a, line, a line there uh, between what is a market intermediary, uh, so it's a market functioning we, from the research that I've conducted in this um, European project called Peer-to-Peer -peer, uh, Production, uh, which involved the Peer-to-Peer -peer Foundation and other groups. Uh, we found out that many often, but at a certain point you seem to, to say, I mean, what the narrative I, I, I got from you is that this is a history of good participatory exchanges from where this cultural crowdfunding is based, from to teams to uh, the original internet culture. Uh, and then it goes wrong with this system of capitalist intermediaries that get inside and, and create these powerful platforms that also enable to create a powerful imaginary like Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and probably the most two popular ones. Um, and so, uh, so the thing is, in this case, uh, I think that also this communal, and you, uh, at the end of the book, you say, okay, there are also platforms, also you mentioned in the case of the, uh, the union, there are also cases uh, in which uh, alternative uses uh, of finance uh, can be justified upon a different political grounding. Uh, and, uh, and that is something that, so uh, what I want to say is that m very much uh, many in initiatives of peer-to-peer, -peer, progressive initiatives, use the market and they interact with the economy, uh, with the market economy, with the state, and with other initiatives also in peer to peer with other communities, so to speak. Um, in the other hand, uh, I see the subsumption of capitalism in platforms, as I mentioned, in Deliveroo, Fedora, 
And uh, I'm curious to hear more, uh, you elaborate on whether it's, there's a capitalist device uh, in the cultural crowdfunding uh, system. And um, I'll stop for now. Thank you. Thank you. And then perhaps we'll give them a chance to respond yeah. before we open up, right? Yeah, so I have, the, uh, I have to say I really enjoyed it particularly. I like uh, this uh, chapter five in that that is about the Global South, the chapter yeah. with uh, uh, Stefan Costantini, you did, and uh, Alex Benistat. And I, I really enjoyed that because uh, there is a point where there is this description uh, about endogenous financing platforms and ex exogenous. Now, you said that there is a blend between the north and the south, right? And there's sort of like the more uh, emerging endogenous uh, initiatives, that maybe these initiatives are not as trusted as the people that are more established platforms uh, uh, from the north. And what is interesting about the more exogenous platforms? And, and what is interesting uh, about that is that there is a di diffusion of ideological production coming from the north to, uh, and it's used to, to train, uh, advertise, uh, make it possible to trust the endogenous local platforms. So, so people in Africa or in Latin America that uh, have to be persuaded to give money, the ideological discourses for that persuasion, I understand, are coming from the north, but they are adapted to the national context somehow. This is what I got from the, which is very interesting how then you have this diffusion of production and you have this adaptation to the national context uh, that is very interesting. But uh, what I found uh, really actually um, uh, thrilling in a way is that there is this idea that uh, Africans, for example, are naturally predisposed to be great entrepreneurs. So this is like this natural uh, essentialism about uh, Africans or Latin Americans. We, we are really good at being entrepreneurs and, and these platforms that are coming, whether you trust the northern ones or the uh, more local ones, they're going to give this impetus to be great entrepreneurs. So this is building of the natural great African, for example, uh, Nigeria or Senegalese entrepreneur that is now is going to use this to empower themselves. Uh, additionally to that, this natural predisposition to entrepreneurship that is already there, but the, this platform is going to give you that uh, uh, opportunity that is used in the, in the discourse. Uh, and the second point that I found very interesting is that uh, you have this, um, that by using these platforms you are able to also fight the traditional corrupt uh, economy and black market uh, uh, that is going on, that is useful to cut down on the natural corruption that some of these uh, uh, global south economies are traditionally uh, uh, kind of... Uh, there's a traditional corruption that then these platforms are going to help with transparency and more democratic governance uh, and so on. Um, now, out of all that, I, there is a point that I would like uh, uh, either of you, uh, uh, probably you, Jacob, because you, uh, you were uh, co-author of that, uh, to understand more about. There is this idea of pedagogy and pedagogical training that some of the companies like Orange, for example, uh, that uh, have a neo-colonial logic uh, in, in francophone countries in Africa uh, or elsewhere that basically uh, there is pedagogical training and workshops and we're going there in, in online MOOCs, uh, MOOCs environments and courses of how to do this crowdfunding uh, and to set it up for your business. And, and I want to hear more about that because uh, I think it, it it seems to me that a lot of the narrative that runs through that chapter has to also, it feeds this ideological diffusion, feeds into the pedagogical practices that, that are happening. Like we're going to teach you, Orange, for example, is going to do the training workshops and whatever. And the ultimate, uh, I think, uh, quote, I think, is one of your interviewees that says, we, we are interested uh, in qualified labor, the middle class, and that's all we're interested in. We just need to get the, the most qualified uh, labor to then produce, uh, uh, you know, to, to, to um, uh, 
to produce the surplus value, you know, like that we need here to, to make uh, a back in these countries and to uh, uh, get excited about how we're going to enter these markets in this kind of ne almost neo-colonial impetus to, to uh, sort of reinforce has or emerge this uh, sort of uh, zombie capitalism kind of scenario, right? So, yeah, I'd like to hear more about this pedagogical stuff. I think it's really, uh, uh, really cool, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Sina. Yeah, we just have a few seconds, uh, just pour te dire parce que quand Alberto Cossu parlait plutôt de la question de qu'il y a une sorte de nar de narratif que tout allait bien, puis en fait euh, ça, ça on mm -hmm. est parti dans un ça serait pas mal que tu répondes à celui-là. Euh, après par rapport à l'extermination de, de la production de valeur, j'ai pas trop bien compris ce que tu voulais dire, mais pour te répondre par le premier. Ok, so um Maybe coming back on the value, mm -hmm. and uh, it's um, it's linked with the, the first point you mm -hmm. you were talking about. Obviously, there's uh, an economical value, and maybe um, we do, didn't put that much in the book because we we made many interviews and we had um, uh, question questions. Yes. 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 Uh, of many, more than uh, 1,000 people answered, and um, there's this kind of value. But uh, another point, um, which is important, is communication. Mm -hmm. If it is a band, or if it's a writer, or whatever, sometimes they don't even care if they don't get the money mm -hmm. to make it. It's just a communication thing. And more and more, and that's what we try to explain, the value of it is not necessarily economic, it's just to make it happen, to, to make it um, visible to to people. So maybe uh, that's, that's aspect, um, I think we're talking a bit about it, but maybe we didn't explain it or um, put many, because the the book has a size and we're obliged to make choices, but we got data on that and um, I guess, I, I wouldn't say that it's the most important thing, but um, for many players or actors, um, this thing is, um, is really important. And then as, um, uh, this is the word, intermediaire, mm -hmm. as they are intermediaire, this communication stuff is really important for the banks because you, you were talking about the banks. They're there from the start, from the early start, uh, just behind. And now they're kind of, well, uh, I'm working on that subject for 10 years now. Mm -hmm. and now they appear, uh, they were not because the, the discourses as well um, had evoluted. At the first, in, in a in the first years, they were really uh, saying or wanted them to be seen as alternatives. They, they were using a lot of these terms. And more and more and after years, as far as they had to um, develop um, partnerships uh, with uh, big structures, the, this word disappeared and they assumed maybe because they assume themselves financially, they assume the fact of not being an alternative, but be part of this new word that appeared that was ecosystem, or ecosystemical way of seeing the world and seeing the business. Um, so that was the, the first point, and... Um, uh, what was the other one you wanted to... Do to yeah. Well, how um, Alberto got the sense that there was a narrative uh, whereby, uh, in a way, crowdfunding or fundraising goes wrong mm -hmm. with digital intermediation platforms. How oh, yeah. suddenly it goes with the development of internet. We, we get into a, um, 
you got, I don't know if maybe a minor instance, but what I think what you said you were saying is that you got an impression with that, with the historical overview that sometime we went from a, almost a pure mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, situation to, to, mm -hmm. to, to, to something that's gone rotten mm -hmm. uh, with, the, with the event of, uh, with the event of uh, crowdfunding platforms. Yeah, you're right. We, <laughs> <laughs> you're right about that, so it's sort of... Uh, uh, sometimes a, a kind of naturalization of the, the thing uh, I assume I'm doing uh, but I, I've already had this discussion before just, um, it's not the fact that it's getting wrong it's just uh, that um, uh, and as you said in the conclusion uh, seeing it from an, an alternative way so as far as um, you the, the domain capitalist actors mm -hmm. are in it. It's not any alternative. Mm -hmm. And what we, 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 we try to, to show is uh, how the, the discourses are for us, as far as I was talking about communication and discourses are important. Course, Just uh, shaping the whole thing if you have a look at those platforms, what are the words you see first? Mm. Liberate your creation, mm. your creativity. And so anybody can, and even that, we could have a discussion about the, uh, how do you say, the, the, the sliding, slide, yeah. the, the slide from creation to creativity. Mm. It's just like the creativity industries and stuff. Just anybody can do it. And um, it, it um, it's relied to, to again to the first point. It's just easy, as you, you were saying. Mm -hmm. It's easy to do it, but use it, mm -hmm. and that's what we try to analyze, just and criticize. Mm -hmm. It's just un what what is under the, the words, and uh, that's the reason why I'm. Uh, I was referring to. Um, to Michel Foucault, mm -hmm. uh, with, um, with this, uh, this way of, and Roland Barthes, mm -hmm. uh, this question of uh, mythification. Mm -hmm. So, I assume sometimes my, the text could, mm -hmm. is not clear enough to, not, not to slide into this right or wrong thing, but mm -hmm. just, to, to me, it's just an historical, way of uh, evoluting but not evoluting um, especially in the um, um, uh, the alternative way mm -hmm. but letting uh, make you believe that it's, it is one mm -hmm. and it's really not and uh, the example Jacob gave about uh, the strike to me, uh, really illustrating that kind of stuff. I'm really um, surprised all the time by all um, sort of alternative um, project or alternative, and they always go back to those actors. And so, so part of the money that could be useful for the players just part of uh, or. Um, did you see any convincing uh, instances of resistance to uh, yeah, dominant well, uh, platforms? Yeah, well, the, the easy way of doing it is just you pay directly the person or send a check. Which I have uh, many, ex well, not many, but few examples of people realized after um, I've, um, I've done one campaign that they could do another way. And then we go back to history, because historically it was this way. And it's no, there was no capital or capitalism in it. So just a question, I'm wondering. Like this new blockchain idea, that was a blockchain and distributed uh, ledgers, but that, that this is gonna be the, the new thing that is gonna offer the new, Kind of go, these are governance systems and all that kind of stuff. But 
And yeah, yeah and uh, uh, that's what I was saying uh, before with Paula. In South Africa, we were amazed by the the people who were running these platforms that they, they wanted the people to use digital devices. And historically, the people uh, they, they don't trust. Uh, mainly, they don't trust those kind of devices. And so they said, "How can we do?" We have to teach them how to use it, and we need the government to, 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 to make communication about it, and we need to convince the bank as well, because uh, well, uh, the, the, the money transfer is also, you, you didn't speak about it, but it's really an important thing. If you're British and you send money to South Africa, or South African sending money for a uh, a project in England, probably the bank would refuse the transfer. That's what they said. Because it's, it's, it would be like um, it's called Longchamp. Mm. Yeah, there was a, there was always the fear of uh, illegal money transfers. Yeah. So there was always there, and and despite the the, the other problem was the fact that uh, seventy to seventy five percent of the population did not have bank accounts. And this is yeah, maybe this exactly. has this obviously will have evolved uh, over the last. Three, four years in some respects, but um, what we saw is that there were many types of crowdfunding uh, going on. Um, we were lucky enough when we got to South Africa to uh, just purely by chance, we, we the, the guy who took us in the taxi happened to be married to, to a black girl from um, from the township, so we were able to go in the township and meet people up there, which wouldn't have actually been the case. We hadn't we hadn't been able to make any contacts initially. And uh, they said, well, yeah, we do this all the time, mm -hmm. but we don't use a computer for this, and we don't, you know, we don't use a credit card. But this is what we've been, this is what we do all the time. So. And, they, and they were surprised to know it, it has a name. Yeah, because oh, they crowdfunding. Okay, I'm going to join it down. It was quite, it was quite, <laughs> it was quite interesting because yeah, this guy, his uh, his wife, uh, his wife's sister had, had uh, you know, crowd, in a, effectively crowdfunded um, a. a, a um, a rap um, album that she was part of uh, that way, um, but um, yeah. But the the real the real uh, what we really saw when we met with people was this very very strong wish to um, educate. What they said, what they called educate, what they how that was what they. they yeah. um, I wanted to re to, re to to reply to uh, Alberto. Um, uh, there was one point, I'm not sure I fully understood the question about the externalization of value uh, production, perhaps you could rephrase that, um, yeah. uh, but just very quickly, um, you said that perhaps we didn't give enough attention to how um, users produced the ideological discourse, how they were part of producing that, how, how in, a, in a sense you got a sense that it was very much a top, a kind of top down. Um, this is interesting because in the I don't see the, 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 the third or the fourth chapter. Um, no, the fourth chapter. Uh, one of the points that we really wanted to make uh, in that chapter is that um, the ex-owners, because in many cases, as I said before, the, 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 um, what, we, what were the owners when we first met some of these people 10 years ago are no longer the owners, like the people who founded for instance, uh, Kiss Kiss Bank Bank platform in Paris, uh, they they now owned by the um, La Banque Postale, which is the privatized post office banks. Um, so they're no longer the owners. So what I'm saying is the managers of these platforms and the people who work within the platforms themselves, um, it's interesting to consider these uh, people, whether they're actually getting a uh, whether they're in shares, whether they're getting a, a wage or, or even interns, to actually take a step back and consider them also as users. And when you actually consider them, in a sense, as users of the platforms, uh, rather, as a, rather than strategists, per se, and then you consider the, the artists, in this case, who are also, in a way, different users of the platform, and then the financial contributors and the wider public uh, who are who are kind of approaching these platforms sometimes indirectly via other other social network uh, also as users uh, that gives it, 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 it brings an interesting uh, sort of analytical perspective um, there there 
from, from which point of view you can start to consider to what extent the actual financialization as, in the, as a strategy of capital uh, is then, uh, I'm not saying entirely determining, but to very much, to, to, to wide extent conditioning the use of the, the, ver the various types of usages of these platforms. Mm -hmm. um, and coming back to that uh, initial question, yeah, I think there's a, there's a, there's a huge amount of ideological, um, ideological production from the, from the, from the basis, from the grassroots. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that I, I, ver I very much like to, to quote uh, Athena and Martin Gack uh, when you spoke of how um, even these, um, these mundane tasks of logging in, providing, for going getting a code, and, and you know, that, that constant um, semi-automatic uh, activity that we have when we're using all these different platforms is in itself a form of... Uh, uh, a very basic ideological production, not in as in a production of a of a grand discourse or or doctrinary production, but I think that really we have to pay attention to that uh, too, uh, which is obviously something you know. This is a small, this is uh, quite a small volume here, so we haven't been able to go into that with as much uh, detail as we as we'd like to. Um, so yeah. Uh, and just uh, to get one thing straight, I, mean, I wouldn't want anyone to think that we wrote that uh, that the uh, Africans are predisposed to be great entrepreneurs. Or no, the, no, they were. No, no. Did you <laughs> say, not, not you. You didn't say that. That that the, the people are agitating and uh, propagating yeah. this ideology. Yeah. They're using that. Oh, you are naturally yeah, well, uh, as a, Africans. Uh, that was uh, naturally very, yeah. very good at their pursuit. Therefore, with this platform. That You're going to be yeah. able to do it, it's like uh, selling the washing machine, like you uh, are naturally... Yeah, you know. this was very much from, um, from uh, again, from managers uh, mm -hmm. of the platforms, from uh, state uh, agencies, people we met, um, from uh, ministries, uh, I, I recall one conversation with a, a guy from the, the Ministry of Culture and Tourism in Ethiopia, there was this, yeah, but again it's a very an historical approach when you, you mentioned like the idea of almost natural corruption but it's a it's a it's a discourse which totally evacuates mm. the question of the history of africa in, in the 50s 60s and the, the role of the international monetary fund and the, 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 it's, it's as if like it's like the history of this this question started five or six years ago and of course there's you know there's roots to that and obviously before in the colonial era etc so yeah, there's nothing natural about it whatsoever, obviously, I mean, no. Uh, yeah, I think that the, the logical production from the Orans and the companies that they're actually yeah, doing yeah. that at the logical yeah. oh, production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is, uh, I mean, Orange, what is Orange? Orange is, uh, is uh, the offspring of uh, France Telecom. France mm -hmm. Telecom was, uh, as you know, the the, 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 the state, the state, and before that, it was the uh, an office of the Ministry of Post uh, Telecommunication. Uh, it's the French state. It's an offspring of the of the French state, quite clearly, and that's they're operating in Senegal, all over West Africa, and um, and sometimes in the most uh, amazing, we, we come across, we came across some quite um, some quite funny situations where orange, orange, uh, the as in the um, the telecom. Uh, I, uh, internet provider uh, was coming into conflict with Orange Money, uh, so you have these uh, these kind of completely um, uh, quite hilarious uh, examples of uh, uh, neo-colonial mm -hmm. uh, madness. <laughs> uh, and uh, but uh, but but they are extremely present and extremely present in terms of producing discourse, which is another thing, obviously, that we've seen with all these players. Um, they, uh, the, the, the managers of the of these platforms spend a lot of their labour time producing uh, discourse mm -hmm. for, for TV, for, for uh, like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang that I talked about earlier on. Several books he's brought out. He's, he's very present in conferences. Vincent Ricardo. So there's a lot of time spent in what some of these people call yeah educational uh, pedagogical activity. Any other um, comments from the panel, or should we open up I have a questions? Quick response, sure. We're super quick. Uh, I think it's very int interesting this idea of ideological production from below, and actually found it at the same uh, level 
by when I was studying co-working spaces in Thailand. Mm. And I realized that actually co-working spaces were doing much more than renting desks to digital nomads, often from the West, but are actually spreading a mythologized idea mm. about what Silicon Valley is, what a startup is, and why implicitly why you should actually desire, you should desire to be one, right? So I completely, I completely uh, agree uh, with that point and I find it intriguing. Now, coming, again, just to clarify that point, basically, page seven, you say crowdfunding platforms, um, middle of the page, confirm the transfer of value production to external entities, uh, after you quote Vincent Moscow. Uh, and what I was questioning is that I can see that, uh, and I can see that clearly also in another case study that I'm doing, which is about uh, alternative finance. So people taking ownership and investing in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or other money. And by the fact that they are communicating online, self-coordinating, they are manipulating the price and artificially creating the buzz so they create values. There I see crowds actually and willingly and reflexively creating value, financial value out of nothing. Uh, which is a particular thing about financial value. But anyway, uh, this is something that is different that I see from the creation of an artifact, of a book, of a whatever cultural artistic product. I see, still see the value, even in material value, in something that is created by the one who creates a page on Kickstarter or whatever platform and say, give me money so that I can do that. So there's a new term, the fluff value. Like buzzing around is a yeah. new, uh, new term. Yeah. yeah. But I think what, what we mean by in that specific use of external players or external actors is the fact that crowdfunding to some degree offers um, um, a model whereby the so-called creative culture industries um, can effectively outsource that uh, value creation process out of the realm of the firm, uh, which was the, you know, the case in the, in the 60s, the 70s, and 80s. But by the same token, um, I think one has to, one have, you have to stress the, 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 the permanence. I mean, the, 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 both the, the old value creation process of the culture industry is by no means finished. It, it's not ended. It, these run, they, they run parallel, they run, they, 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 they get on well. It's the whole point of intermediation, I think. They, they work well together still. Um, so, yeah, perhaps, you know, let's not say that this has in any way replaced the old uh, formulae for uh, value creation. Yeah, they, they, don't, they don't assume the risk. Yeah, it's also, but that, that in itself is uh, a, a continuity of the culture industry's model, the risk, externalization of risk. That's, uh, that's the way uh, 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 I was saying, it, external. Mm -hmm. Just this is where uh, they go putting on, on, yeah. putting it on the shoulders of people instead of the state or instead of companies. Yeah, yeah, and that's interesting actually, that allows me, because you, because, uh, I mean, Alberto, you said that, mm. that some of the um, uh, cultural production couldn't be funded uh, otherwise. I mean, obviously, if we if we you know put on the blinkers and believe that capitalism will never ever be um, uh, replaced, um, then uh, yeah, sure. But um, I'm not sure that it's easier, um, which of course is part of the discourse, to to actually uh, fund, produce, uh, and then promote uh, work going through um, crowdfunding. If that's easier than going through the I know, horrible process of, of, of trying to raise money through uh, a public grant. Uh, on, on the contrary, most of the feedback we've got from people interview is that people like, uh, often we've interviewed people uh, who said, I never thought this would be such a, you know, mm -hmm. such a, a, a pain to actually do it. I'm not doing this again. Mm -hmm. uh, one, this is enough. Of course, some go back, but this was often something we heard in interviews. They didn't realize exactly how much labor it was going to be. Mm -hmm. And especially when you actually got the money and, and, the, and you've done the work, what you thought was your work, like producing an album, oh shit, yeah, then now they've got 170 yeah. different parcels to pack up and yeah. take that to the post office <laughs> and, oh boy. Uh, so, so that they, and there was, was a not guy that was how to make a video and like took a year to learn how to make like, the whole yeah, thing. I mean, like, there's so many examples of, of, of um, 
there are so many examples also that we've seen of, of projects that you know don't go that you know they get the, the money but the, the, it, it doesn't materialize because uh, because you know the people don't people don't actually appreciate how much you know for instance making a documentary what that entails specifically if, if you're starting out in that and you haven't got the the uh, support of people of, 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 a, of what you would have if you're working with professionals uh, then uh, it often gets lost in you know lost in kind of progress and, uh, well that that's, that's the reason why the platforms what, what we call normal normalization yeah okay because now uh, at the beginning it was um, um, I, I, I could talk of, about creation especially on trailers and stuff it was sort of uh, this there was a lot of experimentation lots of experience yeah, in the first yeah. Few, like, and more and more um, because the platforms wanted their uh, the amount of succeeded project or um, What's the ra rationalization? They, they, they just uh, rationalize and normalize the way, and so you, you got everything if if you go on uh, a FAQ. Yeah, um, is it, is it the same one? Yeah. one of yes. the we found. Um, and, and then from the first hour to the end of the project, you got everything you you have to do. It's just like a yeah. follow. And again, with the discourses, the people are saying uh, that what. You're not obliged to follow it, but yeah. if you want to see, <laughs> you better do it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the, what's what I call uh, um, uh, suggestion, suggestion, yeah. suggestion, uh, injunction, or suggestion. Mm -hmm. So, but which you're not obliged to, but which, better. Yeah, which, doing we, it. which brings out some quite paradoxical. Um, cases, for instance, one guy we interviewed from, who was a manager at WeFund, he was, yeah, he was saying, yeah, at the beginning we used to get all these crazy videos, like really interesting experimental videos. Now, all we get is um, Kickstarter type videos. But I, at the same, but you know, this is, he's saying that, but the site is, you know, basically giving uh, suggest suggested or injunctive suggestions on what type of video to produce, but he he, he himself as a as a guy, you know, quote unquote a user in the sense of that platform was dissatisfied, um, uh, you know, dissatisfied aesthetically, ethically, uh, from a human or from an artistic point of view, which was really quite interesting. Perhaps it's time we we open up. Yeah. Has anyone got any questions or comments? Uh, it's a comment, but I will try to also make it a question. Uh, the example about the strike, I want to come back to it because it really said much. Uh, let me add a very, another anecdote. There is an investigated journalist in Greece, maybe you know Aris Hadis Nafar, who has produced This is Not a Coup about the Greek crisis, and more recently made the economy screen about Venezuela. Uh, a few days ago, he received a phone call from his bank. Uh, he produces his documentaries based on crowdfunding. So, the bank said, you have received a small donation, but we had to block it, because the message accompanying the donation included the word Venezuela. Okay, I believe this also speaks a lot. We are talking about alternative funding, um, I'm very much interested in uh, promoting alternative journalism, non-mainstream journalism. The big question is who will fund this alternative journalism. A possible answer is crowdfunding, but we have governments that are able to block crowdfunding, platforms that are owned by big businesses, and banks who are owned also by big businesses. So the question is, if this is an alternative way of funding, are we obliged to find an alternative to the alternative? Because if something is really alternative, come on, we cannot uh, hope that multinationals will help the evolution come about. Yeah, I was thinking, if, if anyone else has a question or a comment now, we can take a couple at a time. Just as a follow-up, 
Uh, it's very similar. First of all, thank you for being here. And I, it always happens with me with this guy. I want to ask him and he says it to me. Uh, based on this article of Hexafano that we I think there's the same article we <laughs> And we saw that the big four of the internet, Google, Facebook and the rest that you know, uh, have this power on uh, blocking, delaying or even cancelling this kind of payments. And this happens also with the power coming from governments and other um, organizations of the sort. Have you been, uh, have encountered limitations being posed by this kind of organizations when it comes to donations? And if so, what these limitations do you think are? There was the capital control when we interviewed the... Yeah. Uh, Although, the, yeah, of course there's the capital control in Greece um, some years back, I mean, but I think, I'm not sure that's totally relevant. No, I mean, because... Uh, in uh, in uh, relation to crowdfunding. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. PayPal still worked at that time. But yeah, but Gotel didn't know how to deal with Gotel platform in Barcelona. Yeah. I mean, uh, he was saying us that uh, he was wanted to find this documentary and he was working with Gotel. And it's a community-oriented uh, uh, platform. And, and then there's capital controls in Greece. So Gotel didn't know how to deal with it. So sometimes it is host us to dominant financial structures, right? So the, the Gotel platform didn't even know, like, so there's a capital control, how do we bypass it? And then they discovered they could do something with PayPal, but already the, the, the project was actually jeopardized because Greece was going for capital controls, right? So. So it doesn't mean that you're going to have a, a platform and it's going to be okay if, if, if it's all forced us to dominate financial structures, w whichever they are, all the time, right? So, yeah. Remember we interviewed... Yeah, you? absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> just very briefly, um, I mean, I haven't, we haven't come across that many examples of this and I think, you know, um, I wouldn't say that that's really the rule. Um, I think uh, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these, these, these platforms and, and their owners, banks are, are quite happy to, uh, you know, to go to, to go ahead as long as they get a percentage. Um, but by, but there have been cases. Obviously, you know, there's well the well-known case of, uh, of and WikiLeaks uh, yeah, where they were blocked. There was, there's been another case more recently in France of the uh, the Yellow Vest uh, boxer. Who uh, who set up um, a crowd, well whose whose supporters set up a crowdfunding campaign to pay to pay for his lawyer? Uh, the French state actually intervened there to stop that campaign from going through, although he'd uh, already uh, really made a, a very good uh, a very good effort there to to pay his lawyer. Uh, this was the guy who boxed uh, some policemen on a bridge in Paris. On what grounds did they want to stop it? Uh, they, they used, a, they used, a, they used an, um, a law that was passed in 2016 under Manuel Valls, whereby this was an infringement of, uh, this was a hatred of the state. I can't remember mm -hmm. the, exact, uh, the exact term that was used, but uh, it was efficient. Um, but, um, yeah. Uh, an enemy of the state. No, it no. was. Uh, it's it, not like in India they have this additional law that is colonial and they use it now all the time with activists. Like you got an enemy I against the state. Yeah. I think it was an yeah, attempt to the to the. It was because it was specifically because it was considered to be um, because the phrasing of the campaign was considered to be. Um, uh, an attack against the integrity of the police forces mm -hmm. and the security of the state. So something of that nature. This is a, 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 a delicate subject in France at the moment. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's all I can say. Um, I'd say more, more, a lot more often we've seen uh, the opposite, but this is an interesting, I mean, yeah, we have to discuss that with you afterwards, the case of the, the Greek but guy. Yeah, yeah, but maybe it has to to go with uh, history as well. Yeah. Because in the beginning, <coughs> they, they try everything to promote those uh, platforms and stuff. And so, uh, even on uh, um, uh, legal, what's it? Legal, yeah, legal, yeah. legal, legal point. It, the, the the frontiers were really blurred. So, because normally. Um, uh, when you got this amount of money, you're supposed to pay taxes on it. It's part of it's just like an income. So nobody's doing it, and the state and it's really uh, 
cool with the situation of seeing it. Um, but maybe, and historically, because it becomes um, more popular and it could be used as an alternative, we see our sort of uh, these apparatus are just taking control again, say, okay, we let you do your stuff, but now, and on a certain situation, it's not possible. Mm -hmm. And again, it has to go with, um, well, to me, with discourses. It, it doesn't mean it, 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 it was not existing before. It was just um, set behind uh, creativity, the happiness of... I was of, no uh, regulation of the wild, wild west at the beginning, the fall of it, right? The yeah. internet, right? And, and, and everything was, was blurred in some sense. And more and more we see how... Um, uh, the, the, the whole frame structure or mm -hmm. whatever are coming back controlling well in that sense we we wrote a, a bit about control mm. you know, but what, what I'm interested in is what I call a um, uh, control experience and experience controlled, which is people want to um, control their own experiences and platforms try to control their experiences and it's a sort of a double game all the time and maybe um, the, qu the alternative question is uh, it depends on where you, you put the, the um, drop set. Mm -hmm. Where you put the, the boundary, the, the, the point. Well, uh, mm. if you put it in the middle, or just put from one side. So if you put this side, it's amateurs and people are doing it. It's democracy. It's wonderful. From the other point, it's just platforms and so still the same system. And when, when you try to not examine that point or this one, but just trying to see how it works because platform works with the experience of people with pe what people want and stuff and it's really well to me it's really complicated trying to um, taking care of the, the platforms are, as a whole thing not from what we usually do with well or uh, historically did with media was okay that's the producer there's the reception, so it depends on where you are. With maybe with digital um, analysis, and it's, well, to me, it's a question. Oh, really, um, the methods or um, the way we, we 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 try to 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 take all those elements together, but not separately, because it doesn't it wouldn't have much sense taking them separately. So yes, yeah, so picking, picking up on that point, I had an interesting experience as you went through the narrative of your talk. Because in the beginning, especially when you were talking, and, pick, and, and this relates to what you're now saying, I, I'm, I mean, you might not like this, but I was, I was thinking of Boltansky and the new spirit of capitalism. There were elements in, what, in your explanation that were very similar to, to his, the, the city of projects, for example, that you were talking about. Yeah, okay. And so I think that was... That's that was, where it's from. And, uh, that's where you got it from, yeah. And also the, the you know, the, the, that very important part that he says that that's part of this historical, that's where the sort of, um, you know, the cultural spirit of, uh, of, of, of social reform from the 60s and 70s went to. It became subsumed, as it were, within processes of labour and capital. But, but he, he, he holds on to the idea, in a sense, that that is also a, a new spirit, a transformation of, of capital. And a chain and a shift in an interesting shift in the relationship between culture and capital. So that's where we when as you moved on, then you sort of to some extent left that behind and said that all collapses because of the this rationalization process that you talked about, where you start off as a very sort of open sort of um, uh, uh, formation where uh, people can join in out of their love for culture and their joy and so on and so forth, and then that gets spotted and, and taken over by uh, uh, corporate interests of their various kinds. And so, so it's, it's, it's the tension, and, and you're saying, where's the point? It's the tension between 
you know, how deep is that rationalisation process? Is, is, it, is, it, is it a complete appropriation? Or is it, in some sense, some sort of hybrid appropriation that sustains elements of Boltanski's notion of the new spirit? That's, that, was, that was my question, because I think you went one way with that argument, and you seem to be going slightly back from that now in, in this context. So, that, so yes, yeah, and, and as you, and yeah. as you, as you no, said, as you said at one point, it's sort of okay. They they're okay as long as they're making a percentage. So that uh, uh, yeah, so that allows, as it were, this sort of the cultural critique to stay standard. <coughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't think there's um, that the rationalisation process necessarily means a total neutralization of uh, critique or of uh, for that matter of uh, uh, of uh, radical aesthetics or etc um, I think uh, from what we've seen there are many cases where um, radical or critical um, for instance musicians um, themselves realize that there's a there's a contradiction using these platforms which is almost uh, uh, which is almost, uh, you know, too too strong, and that's why you get people who say, "Well, we won't be back on this." Uh, there are also cases, and this made me think of uh, uh, the the Zona des Fonds, the Zad of Notre Dame des Landes, that was occupied for, for several years. They made no, uh, they they at no point. I mean, we 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 contacted people there, we studied, and there was absolutely no attempts on their behalf to use crowdfunding platforms as something which for them was. There was money, they, 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 and there was absence of money also inside. But there was, there was, there was, there was fundraising of various, but not using these platforms. Um, I know, I can't really give you a, a straight answer there. But one thing that comes to mind is obviously if you go back to the new spirit of capitalism, uh, you're talking yeah about the, the the in a sense that neutralization or that. Um, uh, in, in a sense, how the, the the cultural critique became assimilated within managerial managerial tasks and also managerial discourse. Um, one one thing that stems that comes to mind is the the example of um, in the book by uh, Rheingold. Uh, what's his name? The old uh, oh, Rheingold. Howard Rheingold. Uh, it's quite interesting because he documents how they how they effectively crowdfunded uh, in that in that community the first servers because they realised the server that they had for their for their communications on the on those um, those um, uh, post or forum whatever that was that we what they were using but the capacity was not being used so they, and at one point he makes this interesting statement in his book and he says yes yeah, so there we there we were pooling money together so we could consume each other's lives uh, uh, through these exchanges that had become so addictive that we were, and he didn't use the term crowdfunding, but this is what was, was going on. And of course these are the people who typically were coming out of the cultural critique of the communes, uh, of the whole earth uh, catalogue, and that whole movement. Uh, so I think there's definitely something there. Um, whereby, again, going back to what you're saying, Alberto, it's not for me that somehow it goes rotten uh, in uh, 2006 or 2008. Uh, I mean, this is part of a much longer process, and, and this is also why, uh, funnily, I've gone back to working on uh, the. I'm, I'm, I'm totally changed. I'm working on the 60s movement now. <laughs> I've gone back to things that I used to that I used to work on a long time ago, but strangely enough, working on crowdfunding in the 2010s has taken me back to the late 60s, and, and so yeah, totally... But Peter, I mean, there's a sustained historical continuity, because the, the idea of what uh, ideological the register, or they were talking about justific more justification or register in Boltaski that they know was the common good for those decades, right? And then you see like a lot of the sharing companies using the commons, the commons this, the sharing, and then so the, this, the commons are creating together all this collect, they, they try to actually emulate the same kind of story, it's just they adapted to these discourses in a different way to have to do with how can you do this with platform, with creating this more ethical sharing, of, uh, towards commons oriented projects and so on. Even the people we interviewed that were uh, in the same economy platforms, like the, the, 
you know, but Airbnb, they were like, we want to create this experience. Everything's about this experience, right? Get a lot of people on it, you'd be okay, but we want this common sharing, a community of Airbnb people. Like, it's the same kind of like creating, we have a goal here, it's not just for money, we have community, we have experience, and you, you can right, see right, right. But that, that, what I was pointing to here is that there's this tendency to a cynical reading of that, that this collapses back into a sort of more sort of traditional form of uh, power through economic uh, control and ownership. And I was, I was, I was just, I was wondering whether that, um, where you sat on that, that question, because in a sense there were, there was mm. somewhat intention in, in, in the presentation, but, but it's because it's, it's because it's a difficult thing to determine. To, to mm. yeah. it's, it's very tempting as soon as the banks bankroll such a process to say there we are, it's appropriated, and that's 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 in a sense what Poltanski was trying to yeah. argue with or mm. engage with. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah. That's what when I was trying to. Uh, well, I, I don't know. I don't still got the solution, but trying to um, articulate that this kind of controls, which mean you you, you got the power, uh, and then the other side the empowerment, yeah. and then how uh, it works. So. Again, uh, if you analyse the, the platforms, the discourses, and then you, you, we are in um, what we we call um, the normative way of, uh, but again, you're not obliged to follow it. It's better if you do, and, and in that sense, it's educational, and that's the way we um, we were think we were say ideological way of, and. Uh, that's my crazy formulation of um, suggestion, yeah. injunction or... Can I ask yeah. something? Uh, that's when you, you, turn, you that's know, when you turn to Foucault. Can I ask yeah. something? Yeah, Do you exactly. think that who owns and, and, um, and something controls the ideology of it uh, or not? Because that is the key thing. So if, let's say, there's this whole scandal going after Soros, anti-Semitism, Soros is funding Black Lives Matter, Soros is funding this. So do you think that, for example, like open society foundations fund funding certain projects in certain countries in, in relation to the, this anti-Putin campaign that he wants to have uh, uh, and all that, that him funding or anybody for that matter, so the Department of Defense funding an anti-surveillance organization, for example, does that define uh, the policy of the ideology and what the organization do or not? I think it's whether you believe that it does or not as well that is relevant to what well, you're well, asking, right? No, no doubt there'll be examples yeah. that are pure examples of power. In that yeah, sense. But, yeah. But I think what you're saying is that they're not, not all of these are examples of that. I mean, there's something else that's... I mean, that, get, that, get, that gets to your point, I think, as well, about the, 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 the sort of right neglect in your account of, of, the, of, the, of the users. Yeah. Mm. And this, you know, going back yeah, to Altanski's... Yeah, right yeah but uh, um, when we began to work, it, you were more um, working on structures and uh, was more yeah, yeah, right, on right. experience right, and right. what the people were doing. Right. That's right. right. And then... We at some point, what well, I remember, <laughs> even we had this discussion, and and we said we couldn't agree. And I don't know. I was in this. Um, I was working on music, well, and I was a musician as well. And I, I lived, or maybe some of you as well, lived this sort of um, uh, utopian period. With the, the beginning of the, the <laughs> digital, <laughs> we kind of um, short, short circuit so, the system. Yeah, yeah. Like and there's something new, and there was many sites and many way of uh, promoting your music and stuff, and, uh, and trying to get money uh, out of it. And then um, uh, the the thing again, uh, this sort of. Uh, uh, crazy garden um, with crazy in initiatives from to me was this kind of uh, golden age of uh, amateurs experiments and stuff and then we see our, um, all that is getting structured normalized 
and how again the, the discourses are still there they try to to keep the spirit but underneath uh, there's nothing yeah. so um uh, well, after that we just that's the reason why we wrote this um well um, uh, we try to consider uh, the, the workers on platforms, but not only the people who are employed, but because, or on the other side, digital work from uh, the, the, the people paying for. But what could happen if we try to analyze them the same way? Because when you try to run a campaign, you got to raise money, you got to send mails, you got to contact people. And in the, um, in the office, what is he doing? He's just trying to contact people, he's got to uh, run mails, he's got mm -hmm. to do quite the same work. So what what's happening if we try to consider them not separately but together? And in the end, mm -hmm. we... That's why and where we met again. We said, okay, we agree. And so there was these two parts. Originally, we had two, sort of two ways of considering things. And then in the end, we matched again. Uh, so sorry, it, it before, uh, I just want to check if there were any other questions for anyone who hasn't spoken yet, who had any comments or anything. Yeah, just because sometimes you get to one dimension. Yeah, no, that's true, that's true, thanks. Oh, I now, I think what, what you were saying resonates also with the fact that uh, what we experienced, I think, in certain jobs, not necessarily all these jobs, with the affective labor or emotional labor that often is attached. I mean, there was this seminal paper about hostess uh, in flights explaining how they actually were doing much more than just serving a drink or um, make sure that the security procedures were respected. They were taking care, and, a, and that feminist critique as well came and kicked in uh, quite, quite well in there. So I think there is this, this junction of full course and then a critical evaluation of that should take into account also the qualitative difference in exploitation in that. And of course there is a, an argument about self-exploitation which has been pivotal in the post-workers' critique of the Italian and the French tradition. Um, but at the same time, as I was hinting before, I think that there is a, a qualitative, probably not negligible difference between the migrant working for Deliveroo uh, and uh, the self-exploited creative who manages also to perform that kind of uh, task, which is communication and leveraging your social network. So that, that was clarifying my point before. Mm -hmm. Joining the discussion you were having earlier, I, I thought about what I experienced during my research uh, and it looked at how groups of actors managed through discourse um, to establish uh, an idea, an area of investigation, I'm talking for example about Michel Bowens and peer-to-peer -peer foundation. I mean, the whole idea of peer-to-peer, -peer, the whole idea that people organize in a certain way and give it with a manifesto, get a thousand people to actually read it, build on that, it creates a space so that now, for example, it is a pivotal keyword in European funding. Uh, the same way uh, many other people uh, from below uh, manage, for example, in the city of Milano in Italy, where I've studied uh, quite a lot, uh, hacker spaces, uh, maker spaces, uh, all these people manage to create a visible reputation from themselves so that actually they could shape a little bit the city in the end. By their own reputation and discursive production, they were able to establish themselves as credible from the administration who therefore basically gave them the, in Barcelona. The, 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 the right to organize bits of that. Uh, and so I think there is this, this uh, interesting process, which I will touch upon in my, in my, my com upcoming book, about people creating new institutions, some autonomous institutions out of that. 
And uh, in, again, in my research, I was puzzled. And at a certain point, there was this possibility. At, a certain, at, at the end, you say, okay, uh, there is this difference between this corporate, commercially managed cooperation and participation. And on the other hand, you have uh, the more community and engaged, of course. Uh, talking about functionality, it is clear that how much is easier to pledge something on, uh, on Kickstarter, I believe, than manage 20 people, 30 people to cooperate and co-produce something under a shared value and reason and, you know, uh, groups. I, I've done research on social movement and my experience is that it's very difficult to coordinate people on resources to attain a certain result. It's of the utmost difficulty and uh, leadership, how do you face leadership and so on and so forth. So I think that is this uh, trend in this probably it is interesting of people gaining power and using also now, I'm, I'm hopeful, I, I declare it, about people owning financial means and creating value out of their own exchanges that could, I think, radically face even the right to the city to quote Lefebvre or Harvey. Uh, and that, that I think there is a financial mechanism that could allow people to buy entire buildings and fill it up with not just a working space or a healthcare space, but probably layering. And that is a huge responsibility anyway, layering with, okay, when an association takes care of migrants, we have that. So we can have platforms to do many things. But of course, the difficulties of social coordination are something that the anonymous means of money uh, which mediates social relations is key in succeeding in that because the other alternative is one of the utmost difficulties, I think. Are there any other questions or comments? Perhaps maybe we can bring it to a close and then chat over some drinks. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very much. much.